in the previous video we've had a look at the uh, what orbits are and how electrons revolve in those orbits now in this video let us just have a look at how the electrons are distributed in the various orbits and just for your knowledge orbits is also called as a shell so orbit or shell both mean the exact same thing there is two words for the same thing right orbit or shell right so if you have let us just take the example of the simplest um element or in the whole universe hydrogen and here i have the proton which is the nucleus itself in case of hydrogen and i have the electron here that revolves around the nucleus or the proton in this case and i have only one electron so that plus one minus one zero no net charge electrically neutral and yeah so just to keep the atom neutral because you know everything around us is neutral right if ev if everything was charged uh, we would see things being attracted to each other or being repelled from each other right but that is generally not the case generally matter around us is electrically neutral and so atoms are generally electrically neutral i'm saying generally not always and so the hydrogen atom generally again has a proton as a nucleus and one electron and due to this it is electrically neutral it has no net charge but mr bohr in has has uh, had told us that we don't have just one single orbit or a path for the electron to follow but we have also have other orbits or paths for the electron to take and you know so on and so forth so this is the first orbit or the first shell this is the second orbit or the second shell third orbit or third shell we can either call them the first the second the third orbit or shell or we can call them by the letter name klm and so on and so forth and bohr had told us that any of them uh, can be taken by the electron because it is simply allowed for the electron to revolve in these orbits they are stable for the electron to be present there right so how do we decide will the electron be in this uh, shell or will it be present in let's say this shell uh, and if we have more than one electrons how will they be arranged in all these um uh, shells right so that is something that we'll be looking at in this video so firstly the first very simple uh, rule that mr bohr and his um and other fellow scientists they came up with was that whenever you are trying to fill electrons or trying to find figure out the distribution of electrons you want the electrons to take up the lower most shell what do you mean the lower most this is the lower most or the closest to the nucleus so you want to fit the electrons as close to the nucleus as possible now why is that so well that is in that depend that uh has to do something with the energy of the electron and that knows a bit of maths which will you be you will be studying in higher classes and i won't be getting into that but the basic idea is that the electrons want to be placed as close to the nucleus as possible so in case of hydrogen i have only one electron so i won't put that here i won't put that here i'll put that here because i have this empty completely empty available orbit or path and i'll just put the electron here and tada i have the distribution ready but what if i have other elements that have more electrons and more um protons as well so let's say i have something that has um let's say seven electrons uh, seven protons to start off with say one or i'll just i'll not draw all of them it'll take time this is just my new uh, nucleus and this thing has seven protons and just for the sake of simplicity seven neutrons also i'll call them n I'll call them p seven protons seven neutrons inside this nucleus so this is my nucleus here right i hope that is clear i have seven part i have total 14 particles inside that seven protons and seven neutrons just for the sake of simplicity and obviously to keep this whole atom neutral i'll have to i have seven electrons now how do i put those seven electrons in these shells well i just told you that we want the electrons to be as close to the nucleus as possible so does that mean should i put all the seven electrons inside the first orbit 
well that will make it too crowded and all those electrons would like to repel each other right they are negatively charged so they would like want to repel each other so that will be too congested for them so just to space things out just to make it more stable i would want some to fit in here but then some to fit in this shell and you know so i have to just maintain the balance a balance i want them to be as close to the nucleus as possible but also i want them to be um, well spaced out so that they don't repel each other and the atom is overall stable so for that mr bohr and his colleagues have come had not have had come up with a simple formula uh, to figure out how to fill up the shells uh, in this case so yeah so let us let me introduce to you the formula so the formula is uh, this i'll just write it here so the um, number of electrons that can be fit uh, fitted in uh, any given orbit or shell is given by this formula 2n square as simple as that i hope that is visible yeah this number here gives us the number of electrons that can be fit in any given shell now what is n here n is the number of shell so let me call let me number the shells this is the first shell or orbit this is the second orbit second shell or the third orbit or the third shell right so n for this is one n for this is two n for this is three now if i have to figure out how many electrons can i fit in this one orbit well uh, how do i do that i take my n equal to one so i have two into n is one in this case so i have one square one square is one and so i get two into one and put an equal to sign there and two ones are well two so that means i can fit in two electrons here so i'll just fit in the first electron here and let me put in the second electron there so these two electrons would be rotating revolving in this particular orbit now this orbit is completely filled up but i had seven electrons to fill up right so i have filled up two now i'm left with five electrons so now, now I'll have to move the, to, the, to the next orbit or the, to the next shell and let me find the capacity of the next shell. So let me rub this off. Now how many electrons can be fit in the second orbit? Well the formula says 2 times n square and in this case is 2 so 2 into 2 square. 2 square is 4 so I get 2 times 4 and that simply 2 times 4 is simply 8 that means i can fit in eight electrons in the second shell so i've already fit in uh, i've already put two here so i was left with five out of the seven uh, total electrons i'm left with five so now i can put in the five electrons here because this can store up to eight electrons and i have five so i can fit those five electrons very easily so let's put them one two three four five and yeah that's pretty much space out and it turns out that i did not need to use the third orbit or the third shell and the third shell remains empty and the shells after this also remain empty so yeah that is the net that is the end result here this is how our atom would be atom would look like where we have seven protons and seven neutrons inside the nucleus so we have a large nucleus there and we have seven electrons outside in the orbits and they are pretty well spaced but also close to the nucleus so this is a very stable atom and this is how we fill up um, the electrons in the various orbits and i hope that would make sense and yeah that is it for this video